saying this webinar. This webinar is the California Department of Education's update on the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards Certification Incentive Programs that commenced July 1st, 2021, and will continue through 2025 um, and 2026 fiscal year. Um, my name is Kristen Cruz Allen, and I'm the Education Administrator of the Teacher and Leader Policy Office at the California Department of Education. And I am uh, so pleased to be here today, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Susan Olson, um, who's also in our Teacher and Leader Policy Office, Terry Jackson, who is an Education Programs Consultant here as well, and also our colleague, Alexis Clift. So on this uh, slide here, we have the name of our office and our division, the Educator Excellence and Equity Division, and our phone number, um, which is listed. I'm trying to be very 508 compliant, so I'll read it out for you. 916-445-7331. Uh, um, we are very excited that we finally launched our National Board Incentive um, web page. And again, I need to read that out. Um, it is located at https colon forward slash forward slash www.cde.ca.gov forward slash pd forward slash ps forward slash nbpts program dot asp. Um, we also have a dedicated mailbox um, for national board questions, which is nbct at cde.ca.gov. And we hope today to give you um, the name or the way to register for our listserv. Um, and we didn't quite get that for this afternoon's webinar. So we'll be sending that out later to all participants. And all you'll have to do to register for our listserv is to send a blank email to a listserv um, email box that we send to you. And then we'll send you updates on our program as they become available. Um, so as far as our agenda for today, um, we're going to give you an update of the National Board for Professional Teacher Standards Certification Incentive Program, which was included in our new 2021 California budget. We're really excited about that. We're going to review some application timelines um, with you, and we're going to give you an overview um, of the National Board prerequisites, registration, and certification process, and we're joined by our colleagues at National Board that will discuss a lot of this information and two National Board certified teachers that we're so excited are with us. Um, and they will um, introduce themselves uh, later in our in our webinar. Um, and one piece of housekeeping, we'd just like you to utilize the Q&A feature in Zoom um, if you have questions and one of us or several of us actually are gonna be monitoring it and try and answer your questions as they go along. There are some very specific questions, I think, um, that we may have to incorporate in our frequently asked questions later or get back to you if there's a specific situation for your site or for you as a teacher but we'll do our best to get you as many answers today as we can. Um, so as I said earlier, um, our budget bill this year in um, California, Assembly Bill 130, reestablished this National Board Teaching Incentive Program um, that has been absent from California for quite a few years. So we're so excited um, that we're back and, and running again. And we have our national board uh, friends really to thank for that and for pushing it through and, and bringing it back to California. So we're so excited that we're here um, today. And so um, this bill requires the State Board of Education to pretty much approve everything that we talk about in this webinar today, <laughs> as far as the California requirements are concerned. Um, so we just wanna give that caveat that we have a item going to the board in November. Um, it's The meeting is on November 3rd and November 4th. And as long as everything goes through that everything that we say in this webinar um, will happen in the timelines that we present today. Um, and we hope that that will happen, but please stay tuned and watch our item in November. Um, and we'll keep you abreast of all updates through our listserv as well. 
And then we will actually hold another webinar once the board acts um, to kind of keep you updated as well. Okay, so this program that was included in the 2021 budget um, is very exciting because it actually um, provides $5,000 per year for five years for any teacher um, that has already attained national board certification that's working in a high priority school. And I know that we've had a lot of questions about who um, is going to be on that high priority school list. And one of us will be covering that later in the webinar. And also um, we have a list that is posted um, now with our web pages. So that's very exciting as well. And in addition to the $5,000 for already um, certified teachers, there will be a subsidy grant of $2,500 for any teacher that initiates the process of pursuing the national board certification. So this is to help with all the fees involved um, in, in pursuing your national board certification. However, we wanna say that individuals will be responsible for their own applications um, costs um, to process those, which is I think $75. And we'll talk a little bit later about that um, in the webinar, but we're excited that we have these two components in our new program. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Susan. Yes, thank you so much, Kristen. Um, so first we're gonna talk about the incentives for the currently active National Board Certified Teachers. Teachers that are eligible for the incentive include educators in a teacher leadership role, such as peer assistant and review coach, a mentor and other teacher support providers, as well as school counselors with people with people personnel services credentials, um, as well as classroom teachers. Educators working in school districts, county boards of education, county superintendents of schools and state operated programs, including special schools, regional occupation centers or programs operated by joint power authority or a county office of education or an education program providing instruction in kindergarten or any grades one to 12 inclusive that is offered by a state agency, including the Department of Youth and Community Restoration and the State Department of Development Services. Eligibility is also dependent upon the entity being listed on the high priority list, which we will discuss in just a moment. Please note that the National Board Incentive Program is not retroactive for existing National Board certified teachers that are already working in high priority schools. Um, so it starts as of July 1st. Uh, 2021 and moving forward. Existing National Board teachers may apply for the $5,000 annual incentive for five consecutive years as long as you meet the eligibility requirements. In addition to the incentive for existing National Board certified teachers, the state is also providing a grant subsidy to support new candidates working in high priority schools that initiate the process for pursuing national board certification. To be eligible for the subsidy, it's very similar. Candidates that meet all eligible criteria set forth by national board, which our friends from national board are going to go into um, their eligibility criteria a little bit later in this presentation. Uh, you must register with the, with the national board by February 28th, 2022 work in a high priority school, and be an assignment and school site listed on the previous slide of the National Board Certification Incentive Program. California Assembly Bill 130 defined high priority schools as those with 55% or more of its undeplicated pupils classified as an English learner or foster youth or eligible for free or reduced price meal. The list of high priority schools is now is you are now able to access on the CDE's National Board Incentive Program webpage, which we've shared in the chat and will continue to share in the chat in case some people come in later. <clears throat> there are currently 6,725 high priority schools 
based on the 2020-21 California Longitudinal Pupil Achievement Data System, also referred to as CalPADS. To qualify for the $25,000 award, a teacher must be teaching in a high priority school in that first year of the award. If this same high priority school changes so that it is no longer considered a high priority school, the teacher will still receive each of the $5,000 annual payments for five years. If a teacher moves to another school that is not a high priority school, they will no longer qualify for the remaining $5,000 annual payment. And now I'm going to turn it over to Terry to talk about the application and timeline. Thank you, Susan. Applications for the annual incentive for current MBCTs will be available on the CDE National Board Incentive Program webpage upon board approval. MBCTs need to submit an initial application for the first year of their incentive. MBCTs do not need to reapply for the incentive each year unless they change school sites or districts. MBCT status will be verified annually with the MBPTS as well as with the district staff. Next. Candidate subsidy applications will be available on the CDE National Board in Incentive Program web page upon board approval. Candidates need to submit an initial application for the first year of their candidacy. Candidates do not need to reapply for the subsidy each year unless they change school sites or districts. Candidate status will be verified annually with the MBPTS as well as district staff. Pending State Board of Education approval, this is the 2021-22 timeline for the subsidy application. We hope to post the subsidy application quickly if the State Board of Education approves it at the November meeting and close it at the end of January. In February, we will notify applicants if they are approved so that they have time to complete the MBPTS registration before it closes at the end of February. This timeline will most likely change in subsequent years to provide candidates more time to apply for the program. Pending State Board of Education approval, this is the 2021-22 timeline for the MBCT incentive application. CDE will open the application in January or February. In March, CDE will confirm with National Board that all applicants have current certifications. In May, CDE will confirm with LEAs that applicants have completed the entire school year with the high priority school. In June, CDE will release payments to the LEAs. And now I'd like to turn it over to our friends at the National Board. Everyone, my name is Stacy Hicks. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher on staff with the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. Um, you can reach me at an email address, shicks at nbpts.org. I'm joined today by my colleague, Sarah Pinsky, um, on staff with the National Board. She can be reached at spinsky at nbp, nbpts.org. And we're also joined by two wonderful California um, NBCTs, Bootsy Battle Holt uh, from LAUSD and Lori Solis, NBCT from Lodi USD. Um, we're really excited to talk through um, a little bit about national board certification. Um, we're also going to talk about why we think California's teachers should pursue it and what supports are available to teachers um, in their pursuit of national board certification. 
I'm going to turn it over to Sarah to talk us through um, what is National Board Certification. Thanks, Stacy. I see some familiar names um, in the chat, so I'm sure uh, some of you who are already National Board Certified teachers um, will already know uh, what I'm about to say, but for those of you who are new to the National Board community, uh, welcome. We're excited to have you. Um, National Board Certification is a voluntary advanced teaching credential for P-12 educators, including counselors and librarians, and it's designed to assess teaching practice and support teacher development. Most importantly, uh, we are by teachers for teachers. Our standards in each content area are created by a committee of expert practitioners, and our assessment reviewers are all teachers. Through board certification, educators demonstrate their expertise through a valid and reliable process that is standards-based, performance-based, and peer review. Uh, Stacey is going to talk a little bit more about the certification process, but at a high level, teachers seeking certification must analyze their teaching context and their students' needs. They submit videos of their teaching and provide student work samples that exhibit student growth. And most importantly, through the process, teachers hone their ability to reflect on their practice and articulate what went well and what they would do differently next time. We are really proud that as of this year, more than 120,000 teachers across the country have achieved national board certification. And on the next slide, uh, you'll see one of the reasons that we are committed to growing the number of national board certified teachers, especially here in California, is because more than a decade of research from across the country shows that students taught by national board certified teachers learn more than their peers. In fact, studies show that national board certified teachers may generate one to two months of additional instruction for their students. And this impact is even greater for students in high needs schools. Importantly, students of national board certified teachers demonstrate evidence of deeper learning and national board certified teachers have a positive impact on the profession. Studies show that national board certified teachers remain in the profession longer than their colleagues and national board certified teachers are critical to bringing up the next generation of practitioners. Studies show that new students who are mentored, sorry, new teachers who are mentored by national board certified teachers exhibit improvement in their practice and generate additional student learning. Uh, and now I'll turn it over to Stacy to say a little bit more about the certification process. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, for National Board certification, there are 25 certificate areas, and each of those certificate areas require a candidate or a teacher pursuing certification to complete four components. Um, those components uh, can be taken in any order, but component one is looking at content knowledge, uh, component two looks at differentiation and instruction. Component three is the teaching practice and learning environment. And component four is the effective and reflective practitioner. So those components, uh, component one is um, a computer-based assessment that's taken at a testing center. Components two, three, and four are, are portfolio-based and they're submitted and uploaded through an electronic portfolio system. But again, based on in the classroom, looking at student work samples, uh, creating videos of teaching practice and reflecting on, again, as Sarah mentioned, uh, the teaching um, practice and what you're providing to your students and how those lessons um, impact your students and create um, learning opportunities. So that's kind of the certification process as far as the four components. Um, we'll go ahead and advance to the next slide. And a candidate um, journey can look different. So as I mentioned before, a, a candidate can take those components in any order. So you could take them um, through a variety of timelines. You have up to three years to complete those certifications or each one of those components for the certification in, in whole. Um, but to be eligible for board certification, there are three things that a teacher should be mindful of. One, that you should have a bachelor's degree uh, we have provided a note that candidates for the career and technical education certificate um, are required to hold a bachelor's degree only if the state requires that for their license, uh, for your current teaching license. Um, again, the second eligibility requirement is a valid state teaching license. And third is that a, um, a teacher needs to have three years of classroom or school counselor experience prior to starting the certification process. 
So if you have those three um, pieces of eligibility, um, you can begin certification. Um, and again, those timelines um, really look at completing the components within three years, but there is a lot of uh, flexibility. Um, you can take up from anywhere from one to four components throughout the candidate cycle in a year. Um, and if you do need to continue and take any retakes uh, to bolster a score to achieve certification, you have an additional two years to do that on top of those three years. So essentially you could start the process anywhere from one to five years. Um, we have the guide to national board certification, which is a very helpful document that we'll drop in the chat, but that covers the important dates and deadlines that every candidate should know and be familiar with with the certification process. So if it's something that you're interested in, one of the best places to start is the guide to certification. We'll just go ahead and advance to the next slide. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Lori and Bootsy to talk about um, national board certification and to tell you the why, because what better advocates for board certification than California um, exemplar and BCT. So I'll turn it over to Bootsy and Lori. Thanks so much, Stacey. Um, I will uh, jump right in first if you want to uh, go to the next slide. I think we're okay. So um, Laurie and I decided that we just wanted to share with you a little bit about our own national board journeys. And so um, I had been teaching for about uh, six or seven years when I started to feel sort of um, stagnant. I was in my classroom. I, was, I felt like I was doing a lot of the same things from day to day, from week to week, month to month. And I was thinking, you know, I want to be in teaching for my entire career. And so I was really looking for a way to sort of like expand my teaching experience. And I remembered that before I was even a teacher, I had a friend in another state who was saying to me, oh, I'm thinking about getting national board or masters. And I didn't even ask at that time because it was before I was teaching. I didn't even ask what that meant, but it stuck with me. So I decided to look into um, what the national board process was and was just really inspired by, um, sort of the kind of reflection and journey that it takes to become a national board certified teacher. Um, I went through the process, I'll make the, the process story short, but basically, you know, achieving my national board certification opened up a whole new world for me in teaching, um, new opportunities, new networks. Um, I have been, I've had the opportunity to engage with other teacher leaders and policymakers um, across our district, across our state, and even across the country. And all of it was sort of sparked by the national board journey of really looking at myself as a teacher and thinking about where I fit into the larger education community and how being part of that larger education community directly impacted the kids who I was serving. So that's just a little bit of my story. Um, again, I don't think I said that my uh, certification is in uh, uh, adolescent mathemat early adolescent mathematics, um, and I am a math teacher in LAUSD. Thank you, Bootsy. My name is Lori Celez. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher in the area of early and middle childhood literacy. So my certification spans the ages of three to 12 in the area of literacy, and the reason that I became interested and involved in becoming a National Board Certified Teacher is that it was always a personal goal. Uh, the interest was sparked when I was a new in my career, but it took a while. And when the Climate for Education came along where it was no child left behind, I was teaching in a, in a school that was known for their literacy. I taught with some colleagues that were experts and well-respected, and I moved to this school knowing that I would be teaching alongside these experts, and I wanted to learn from them. Meanwhile, my own son started having reading difficulties, and the current climate at that time was we're going to get rid of all we know so far about literacy and all you're going to do is march through the teacher's manual if all you do is do that all kids are getting the same instruction and they will all learn to read well most teachers we all knew better but it was 
we needed to get that message across. And so in order to have something behind my just telling everybody this is not right, I embarked on national board certification. And what sparked that was there's a national board certificate certified teacher in the San Diego, San Diego area, Stacy Begin. She works for CTA. And I went to a class that she was hosting and she was sharing a story of, she has a, a special ed certification. So she was sharing the story about sitting in an IEP and everyone questioning. And finally she said, I'm a national board certified teacher in the area of special education. And I know what I'm talking about. And she said, everybody kind of just thought, well, okay, that they respected that process enough to understand that she and did indeed did know what she was talking about. And so that's what sparked me to seek my national board certification in literacy. And it changes you. The process really does change you. So going through this process, you are looking at whatever you do, how is this impacting student learning? Because that's why we're here. So it, whatever we do, we need to reflect on it and make sure that it's affecting student learning in a positive way. So um, I'll turn it back to Bootsy to continue from there. Yeah, so Lori and I just wanted to um, talk about some of the highlights of uh, being National Board Certified. Um, so as National Board Certified teachers, we can attest to, but other teachers also report that they see maximized student learning, right? That we better understand our students' strengths and areas of need. Um, and all of that uh, includes, you know, adjusting our lesson plans, um, getting deeper knowledge in our content area um, and using data. And most teachers that have gone through this process, it really does make, changes your perspective. You're using data to assess. You're looking at any professional development that you do outside of your school critically, like how is this gonna affect my students learning? And most National Board Certified Teachers will tell you that simply going through this process, it's not simply, but the process itself is the best professional development they've ever done for themselves. So not only for themselves to make you a better practitioner, it's made us um, really look at our student learning. And as Sarah shared, student learning is greatly impacted by becoming National Board Certified. And we also wanted to talk a little bit about some of the um, incentive programs that already exist. And we are so lucky that this new program um, will, um, will not supplant, right? So all of the incentive programs that you may or may not be uh, involved in so far will still exist. Um, I am, as I said, in Los Angeles Unified School District, we have um, an incredibly robust incentive program for our teachers. Um, we can earn up to an extra 15% of our pay every year as National Board Certified Teachers. We're recognized um, just uh, on top of our regular salary for 7.5%. And then there are additional up to 92 hours of additional response, teacher leadership responsibilities that we are eligible to partake in um, in order to earn that extra 7.5% incentive. So um, LA Unified has has long since seen like the value of having MBCTs in the classroom and um, working directly with students. And uh, we're excited that, that the state is also jumping on board to additionally incentivize us. Thank you. And in my district, I work in, for Lodi Unified. It's a fairly mid-sized large district, but a few years back, our bargaining team went to the table and actually bargained for a, an additional stipend to be on our uh, salary scale. So we have 3% um, of a given salary cell. So, and there's also other districts do things a little bit differently. Bootsy shared with LAUSD, Lodi has a, a incentive on the salary scale. Folsom 
Cordova and Fresno actually have cohorts um, that they do within their school district. And then San Bernardino City Unified actually uh, pays for the process. They have a program where they can assist for that. So different, it's you. It, different districts have different incentive programs, which which are in addition to this incentive program. So it's worthwhile checking out in your own district to see what they have to offer. So offers are very different um, in different places, but there is um, there are some out there that are worth checking out. And I'm just going to thank you. We're, we're flipping through the slides back and forth, but um, I was going to speak to this slide right here that we have um, a ton of candidate resources also on the national board site. I also just want to point out that uh, when I got my national board certification, I went through the UCLA support program. Um, so there are many universities that have support programs on their campuses. Um, and also my district has an extremely robust candidate support program. So it is a collaboration between our union, UTLA, um, and our district in order to, um, to have more teachers become national board certified. And one of these on this on this slide is actually a Canvas course. And this is a Canvas course that CTA is currently using with our small cohort of teachers. And it's very similar to the Canvas course that Stanford's National Board Resource Center uses. Um, it's very comprehensive and there's, there's videos, there's all kinds of um, graphic organizers. There's a lot of resources there to assist. Sarah, is there anything else on that slide that we've missed? No, I think you guys hit it. I think um, just for those, I, I, I'm already seen in the, the Q&A, um, uh, those National Board Certified Teachers who are shouting out their candidate support programs and the folks that help them through the process. So um, you can hear, you can see through those and also hear um, from Bootsy's experience how important these programs are to help teachers get through the process um, and to support them on their journey. Uh, so if you are considering pursuing national board certification, we do encourage you to look for, um, see if your district, as Lori said, offers a program or whether there's one um, that may be available to you, um, like, like Bootsy said, at an institution of higher ed or um, the National Board Resource Center or a number of, of other uh, places. And I believe that, um, that the CDE website um, will have a list of some of those programs. And the more we learn about them, the more um, you know, we can post them. Um, and, and the Canvas courses are available for those, especially those who may not have access to an official program, uh, but who may um, un, you know, take, take this journey on by themselves, or maybe they just don't wanna be part of a program. Um, so that resource is, is also available for folks who who are not um, enrolled in programs. So, um, you know, we want teachers to feel supported along this journey um, and we're excited uh, for you all to, uh, to experience this. Thank you so much. And it looks like we've got plenty of time to answer some questions uh, that have been coming in. I know um, we've all been trying to answer questions as they come, but um, we still have a lot in our queue. So um, Alexis, would you like to read out some of our questions? Sure, we have quite a few. I'll start with kind of some of the um, most popular, but um, we had kind of mentioned this, but if we could go over again, many people wanted to know if this included renewals and recertification, and does it um, basically cover the MOC renewals? Um, so for renewals of their certification when they, you know, finish the initial time and then they go and renew, um, anyone with a valid national board certification is eligible um, for the incentive as long as um, you are working in, in the high priority school and, you know, meet all the other um, requirements as far as um, what your placement um, is as a, as a teacher. 
Um, so this is um, as of 2021, whatever your assignment is, and if you have an active uh, national board certification, then you would be able to qualify as long as you meet the other requirements. Um, I'm not sure about the MOC question. What was that? Yeah, they wanted to know if the subsidy can apply to um, the maintenance of certification fees as well. Um, no, because that's two different programs. So um, we have the subsidy program for um, teachers who are newly present, uh, pursuing national board certification. And so they would receive um, a subsidy to help pay for um, the program and um, exams. and um, But the renewal is not a part of that subsidy. Um, so the renewal would, would come out of the person's own um, finances. But if they are national board certified and they're going for renewal, they will, you know, qualify for that $5,000, but that could go towards that. All right, thank you. Um, we have several eligibility questions. I know we've gone over this, but um, one of the main one was, was TK or early TK, are those teachers eligible? Um, I can speak from our perspective of, um, yes, they're eligible for the incentive, but I think that's probably more of a national board discussion around the, uh, the areas that they can concentrate. Sarah, did you want to? Yes. So um, many um, early ed teachers are eligible for national board certification. Uh, we have our, um, uh, I think Stacy posted in the chat, our areas of certification. And you'll see that some of those uh, include early ed years. I think um, the, the eligibility question is whether you're teaching in a um, whether you have a state license and whether you're teaching in a school setting, uh, which I believe the TK teachers are. Um, so I think that would mean you are eligible, but I think we'll add that to the frequently asked questions document as well. That sounds good. Great. Um, just going along the eligibility lines, we had people asking about, um, are they eligible if they are intervention teachers and or instructional coaches? Yes, um, those are, are specifically um, situations where uh, when they fill out the application, they'll have to um, put in other. And um, as long as you're in a um, teacher type assignment, so if it's coaches um, or if you're a literacy teacher, um, you would continue to qualify as long as you're working in a high priority school. All right. And then um, just so you know, when also with that other though, we, you know, we'll look at it as a case by case basis so, because I'm sure there's a lot of assignments we don't know about, but those two examples are, are pretty straightforward. Okay, great. And I think you've answered a lot of these, but um, what about um, availability or people who are going to retire before the five years is over? Would they have to pay um, the subsidy back? You know, I saw that question too, Kristen, um, that it has to do with if someone is nationally board certified uh, and they apply now, but they retire before the five years are up, do they still, can they still get the incentive for the last years of their teaching? I believe the, the budget language said you had to be teaching at least 50% um, of your time in a high priority school. Um, so if you retired before the five years were up and you weren't teaching or actively teaching, um, you would not receive the $5,000 um, for that year. And a lot of you are asking um, questions about beyond 2026. We hope um, that will get a really good budget year um, in 2026, 2025. And we can request that this program continues running, um, you know, and th those are always hopes. So please know that we'll do our best to keep it going after the 2026, but we're only guaranteed um, through 2026 and for the amount uh, which was approved, which is a total of $250 million um, in that um, period, that five-year period. 
And then I just reposted the um, CDE NBCT incentive webpage high priority list. We had a lot of people asking about where the list was, what counts as a high priority. So it should be there in the chat for everybody to see. Um, and then also one thing I wanted to mention too is a lot of people were asking when, um, how they could get the webinar like right after this. It will be on our website. It has to go through, um, you have to transcribe it and go through 508 compliance. So it'll be up on our NBCT website in a week or two, reviewing. I will add though, a lot of the information that we presented today is on those web pages. Um, so please take a look at those. Um, I'll put a link into our um, state board webpage, and I think on the 22nd, which is Friday, our item will actually be posted and it'll be public. So you can actually see the process, the timelines, um, drafts of the applications, which could change depending on state board action, but it would give you a little bit more information. And I do want to address something that I see um, in the Q&A. People are asking about if they had moved to online um, teaching situations, you know, through COVID. And of course, this is a pretty unprecedented uh, situation uh, that we haven't, I, I, you're bringing up great questions that we just didn't think about different scenarios. So first, the first thing first, please go to the, um, the webpage on CDE and see perhaps if your online school is listed um, on our high priority school list. It may or may not be. Um, and if it is not, then please send us a message at that mbct at cde.ca.gov um, and we'll try and get you some more information. And there are just gonna be a few questions today that we're not able to answer, but please know that we're downloading all of them and that we will um, find answers for you and get them back either through our FAQs on the web pages or back through our listserv um, as quickly as we can. Do we have any other questions, Alexis? Um, there's just some individual ones, but um, also I think Kristen mentioned if you were online and chose not to back, um, have not gone back to the classrooms, we addressed that. We have the link to the high priority schools. And then um, a lot of them I see are just very um, individualized. What if um, they leave their high priority school before the end of the year? Um, will they still get the annual incentive was one of, I've seen a few of those. Uh, annual incentive for what? Sorry. If, sorry. If they don't remain in their um, their high priority school through the remainder of the year, can they still uh -oh. qualify for the incentive? So um, when you initially apply for the incentive, um, you need to uh, check the high priority school list. And if your school is on that list and you remain at that school, five years, you will continue to get the incentive, even if they're not listed as, as high priority in, in those future years. However, if you leave your high priority school and you go to another school, um, that must be a current high priority school um, in order to continue your incentive. Does that answer it? And then also we've had a few, if they apply, um, and the payment start after, or does it start after the process has been completed? What if they don't finish by 2026? Will the payment stop at that point? The payment for the subsidy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kristen. <laughs> Um, well, again, I think it goes back to my answer about we're hoping that we have a really good um, state budget that can allow us to continue this program beyond 2025, 26. Um, and it'll all depend on, you know, how many, how much funds are used throughout the five years. Um, so I don't want that to discourage anyone. If anything, just feel encouraged that we're so happy that this program is back and we really intend to fight hard to keep it um, in the California budget. Thank you. Did we lose Alexis? I'm looking through, there's just some individual oh, okay. questions. Um, 
What about um, people who have left the classroom but work at the district office as a full-time instructional coach? That still um, counts as long as um, the uh, you know assignment is still a, a teacher assignment. Um, so, like uh, if you're on you know your your teacher um, placement, um, even if you're um, coaching at the district office level, as long as it's a assignment that um, a teacher can qualify for. What about the eligibility of home teachers where they teach one on one? Um, I don't believe we have any home schools on the high priority schools list, unfortunately. Um, we have a question. Can you apply for the incentive in future years? For example, if your school doesn't currently qualify as a high priority school, but if in a year or two the school moves to become a high priority school, can um, a teacher apply for the incentive at that point? Yes, uh, within those five years of this um, this grant program, um, they would qualify in, in future years if it is a high priority school. And then kind of along those lines, um, a few people have asked, do I need to stay at a high priority school for all five years or can you get um, the incentive for a part of the five years? We'll so, go away if you leave. <laughs> right. So um, the the review process uh, requires us to um, validate a teacher's assignment yearly. So it is an annual um, stipe or an annual incentive that um, for each year that they verify that they're in a high priority school, then they will uh, receive the incentive. The district will be sent an incentive for that teacher. So if they were to leave and not finish out those five years, they just would not get any more of that incentive. They just get it for the years that they work at, at their initial high priority school or any other high priority school. Great. What about a position such as a teacher librarian? Can they also apply for the incentive? Um, so, so a current, somebody who's currently going through the process, um, they can receive um, the stipend um, to go through the national board process, and then they would also qualify for the incentive. Um, and we are still working with the um, logistics of when that actually starts and you know, if it will be um, for a whole year of, of that first incentive payment or, um, you know, when the cutoff is for that. But yes, after they become board certified, they will eventually be um, eligible for the yearly incentive up to $25,000, but we're just working on um, that part of the process. Wonderful. Um, I'm wondering that we have a few people saying that they they missed when the application is going to be available. They want to know um, when it will be approximately ready for them to apply. They don't want to miss the date. <laughs> so the, the subsidy yeah, application, which is uh, for people that are going to seek national board certification, we want to put that up immediately um, when the board acts. So we're we're drafting it and getting it ready. Actually, Alexis and Susan are working diligently on that so that if the board approves as is, we can post it immediately and give you the most amount of time to complete that. We have a little bit more time on the $5,000 for current um, national board teachers. Um, so that's the next slide. And that one, sorry, dog's barking. Uh, will be available in January and February of 2022. Um, and then Alexis, I just wanted, I just, um, Bootsy reminded me, and I think we need to make sure to also um, clarify when we talk about um, teaching assignments, um, it is at least 50%. So, I, so she mentioned like there are some coaches that work at multiple schools. And so they need to be working at least 50% at the high priority school in order to qualify for the um, incentive. Oh, great. That's a great reminder. Um, this is an interesting question too. 
someone wrote that their school qualifies and has several NBCTs. They want to know if they can all use the same application since they're at the same school or if they should write the application separately. They each need to fill out an application because it, it we have to verify that teacher and that teacher's assignment. And it's, it's going to be a very simple application process. So um, it, it won't be, you know, a lot of it. We just need to know who the teacher is in the school and, you know, what your assignment is and what your certification is in. So it's, it's going to be a very quick um, application, but it does need to be individual. All right, and then um, I think we already answered this. NVCTs who are working in a teacher position for the district, are they eligible for the incentive? We've had a few more people ask that. Right, as long as they show that they're working at least 50% in a high priority school. All right, great. And then um, if all, if everybody um, who is on the webinar could put in their contact or email information, we're getting several people who are asking for that. Um, we'll also repost the um, incentive webpage high priority school list again in the chat for um, several people who have missed that and they would like to see that as well. Looking through to see if there are any new ones or a lot of these are individualized. Um, what if you were on leave because you were displaced and work at a non-priority school because you have no options? Do you have to pay the money back you receive, your subsidy? Uh, so when you get paid your sub or your um, uh, incentive, are we, okay, so for the incentive, if you've um, been, you know, already paid for the incentive, that means you've already completed that year. Um, if you are working on your national board certification, um, as long as um, you're working in the high priority school when you initially apply, um, and then you would need to continue to work in a high priority school. Am I answering that correctly, Kristen? Well, if we're talking about the subsidy, um, we're working out the details on how we're going to pay the subsidy. It may go straight to national board. Um, we're just trying to figure out what the best way through CDE is to pay that out. So the subsidy itself, we're not worried about people paying it back if they don't complete in time, um, because more than likely it will go straight to national board and be held there for you. Um, we're looking at a couple of options um, on, on that right now. Um, to make sure that that happens. So we're not exactly sure. But on the incentive, like Susan said, you would have finished the year. Otherwise you would not have received um, the $5,000 incentive. And so no need to, to pay back there. All right, we've had a few questions. I'm not sure if we wanna answer these, but about taxation, about how is the subsidy taxed? Is it taxed at a different rate than regular teacher salary? That I think you'd have to check in with your district. I think we have an FAQ on it, right, Susan, that it, it can be taxed, but as far as the rate is concerned, you'd have to probably check in with your district on that. We don't have anything right. to do with that. Yeah, we, we checked in with STRS and they said it's very much a um, case by case basis by your district. So you would wanna to talk to them about how they will process it. And I think, um, you know, I'm reading through the Q&A too, and I see that we have quite a few, but they are such unique um, scenarios. So please be patient with us and know that we will download them all. We will work with our friends at National Board um, and within our divisions, within CDE and our legal department to make sure that we answer them correctly and we get you answers. We just may not be able to answer all of those really specific scenarios today. Okay, and with that, I think um, we're just about ready to wrap up. Stacy or Sarah, did you see any questions that applied more to national board um, process that you wanted to clarify? Otherwise, we'll probably wrap us up. 
there were some great questions in the chat on um, from folks who said, I'm really interested. I want to get started. What do I do? <laughs> um, and so we have some answers for that. We have an upcoming national board webinar that talks about the intro to national board certification. Um, we can drop that in the chat, but that's an opportunity for you to hear um, from our staff members and from also board certified teachers. Um, it's, a, it's a free opportunity um, available on November 2nd. Um, but it's again, an, a nice opportunity to hear a, a, at kind of depth um, about the certification process, how to get started, what resources you can use and pick up right now um, while you're waiting for the application to come live. But um, that's a really great resource. You, you could also go to our website, uh, www.nvpts.org um, to find candidate resources um, where you can start to learn what certificate area should I select? Um, what kind of things should I be thinking about starting to collect as far as work, sam work samples? Um, you know, what components make the most sense for my school year? Um, so there's a lot of really great um, resources that we can point you to, but that's one that's up and coming. I'm sure that we'll probably be offering additional, um, you know, opportunities for, for these great questions. But if you wanted to get started, um, we don't want to stand in your way and there's really wonderful resources to get you moving. Sarah, anything additional that you would add? Uh, yes, we also offer webinars um, uh, about once or twice a month uh, called Introduction to National Board Certification. So if you are interested in um, joining one of those and getting an even deeper dive into the national board process, um, we invite you to join those. They are free. Uh, they are generally held in the evenings. And even if you um, aren't available at that time, if you sign up and register for the webinar, you'll be emailed a recording afterwards. So again, that is on our website, www.mbpts.org. And I think um, Kristen and Susan said that there is going to be another CDE webinar after um, the uh, board item passes. Is that right, you guys? Yes. So we will be doing an additional webinar uh, really to go more into um, the application process and then also, you know, how things um, will, how money will be processed. And so we'll go into a lot more detail about those pieces after our state board uh, approves our applications and our process. Um, I'd like to jump in real quick. Sarah mentioned something about the National Board webinars. Those are called, um, oh gosh, it just left me. Four connections. They're very, very good. And there's a myriad of topics actually that you can search, um, especially component specific if you're working on specific components. They're very high quality. They're very good. And even like she said, even if you cannot attend, they not only send you the recording, but they also will send you all the materials. So you'll get any materials that were shared during that uh, session as well. So they're well worth checking out. Thank you so much. And thank you, Lori and Bootsy, um, for taking time after, a, I'm sure, a full day of teaching to be here with us and, and to really share your experiences and stories. And um, Stacy and Sarah from, from the National Board, you've really been a key part of, of getting this launched and going again in California. So I appreciate everyone for being here. And as Alexis said, we will be reaching out um, and I will be uh, getting the emails for everyone who registered for this uh, webinar and we'll be sure to send out information about our listserv and um, additional lots of you know exciting things coming up as soon as we get through the state board meeting so i appreciate everyone and we are ending right on time <laughs> thank you so much thank you